Though you fulfilled the Hyrulean prophecy of the legendary hero and destroyed the evil tyrant Ganon, the land of Hyrule enjoyed only a precarious peace. Who knows what threats may arise from Ganon's ashes? The restless people murmured as they knitted their brows and shook their heads. Ever vigilant, you decided to journey away from Hyrule on a quest for enlightenment, in search of wisdom that would make you better able to withstand the next threat to your homeland. Months of difficult travel passed. After a long and fruitful voyage, you breathed deeply the sea spray from the deck of the ship that carried you home to Hyrule. But your homecoming was not to be. Suddenly, a squall struck your ship, and though you valiantly fought the waves, a lightning bolt reduced your ship to splinters. Your world faded to black as you sank into the darkness of the storm-tossed sea with the remains of your craft. But in the cold darkness of the deep, you heard a comforting voice that reminded you of home. It was the voice of Princess Zelda. You're going to be all right, the voice said. What a relief. You opened your eyes to find Princess Zelda standing over you. Or was it? Actually, it turned out to be a woman named Marin. She explained that you had drifted with the wreckage of your ship to the shores of Kohelent Island. This mysterious island was unique for the gigantic egg which crowned its central mountain. It was said that a mythical creature, the Windfish, lay asleep in the egg. You set out in search of your sword and other gear that might have washed up on the beach with you. As you stood in the surf with your recovered sword, a strange owl suddenly appeared and hooted this riddle. Awaken the windfish and all will be answered. What is the windfish, you wonder? And what did its awakening portend? Your most mysterious adventure yet, following the riddle of the windfish through the uncharted island of Coelent, is about to unfold. happening guys my name is adam aka speedy spectrum and welcome to my new let's play of the legend of zelda Link's awakening for the nintendo switch for those of you who have been following my channel for a long time you'll know that Link's awakening was the second game i ever let's played but that was the dx version on the game boy this one is the version that was released 25 years later on the Switch, and I am stoked with a capital S to return to a game that is very close to my heart. Believe it or not, this was the first Zelda game I had ever played. It was one of the earliest games my sister and I had for the Game Boy, and we loved it. Obviously, we're going to start a new game, and believe it or not, you can actually choose your difficulty level between normal and hero. Normal is the classic difficulty, but if you play on hero mode, not only do you take twice as much damage from enemies, you will 
be unable to find any hearts. This is definitely for advanced players. But I'm not going to play on hero mode. I'm just going to play the game as usual on normal mode. Yes, 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 call me a chicken, but I think the game's just going to flow more nicely if I play the game as usual. Alright, here we go. Once again, we're going to enter our name as we usually do in Zelda games. For the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to state my name as Link. Yes, call me bland, call me unoriginal, but it's for the best. And just like that, we are in bed. And two strangers are in the room with us. What could this mean? What a relief! I thought you'd never wake up. You were tossing and turning. What? Zelda? No, my name's Marin. You must still be feeling a little woozy. You are on Kohalint Island. As Marin stated, this game does not take place in Hyrule like most Zelda games. No, we are on Kohalint Island. So let's talk to Marin again. <laughs> Follow the lane south to reach the beach where I found you. Since you washed ashore, lots of nasty monsters have been in the area, so be careful, okay? And we're going to talk to her father. This is Tarin. Oh. Well, Link, you finally snapped out of it. Name's Tarin. Hope you're feeling better. What? How did I know your name? You think it's weird, eh? Well, I saw it on the back of this shield. Right off the bat, we have our first item. You got your shield back. Hold the R button to repel enemies with it. So the shield is pretty self-explanatory. You hold it in front of you to defend yourself against enemy attacks. But Link is not much of a hero without a sword. And that's going to be our main objective for this video. When we leave Marin and Turin's house, we enter Mave Village. For the most part, this is going to serve as our hub for our adventure. There are many different places in the village, including a couple shops, but we don't really need to enter because, well, for starters, we don't have any rupees, and that's kind of important. As you can probably tell, this game looks adorable. And the reason why it has this unique look is because the graphics are based on a diorama that was shown during E3. Big thanks to Zelda Master for stating this fact. And take a look! It's a chain chomp! Except, in this game, it's not hostile, and it's called Bow Wow. Zelda games are often known for having Mario references, but this game in particular has loads. Particularly in the case of the remake, for reasons which we will be explaining later. Without a sword, we don't really have many places that we can go. As Marin stated, we want to head towards the beach, but before we do, I want to talk to this dude. I said I want to talk to this dude, thank you very much. I hear that when you're running out of hearts, you better go find a big fairy. Why? I have no idea, I'm just a kid. <laughs> I love self-aware humor like that. What do you have to say, dude? I heard that you can press the minus button to look at the island map. Not only that, you can stick pins in it with the A button and remember stuff with the X button. But I don't understand what they mean by that. Eh, in time, you're young, you'll learn. 
let's enter this building. This is the library, the village library to be specific. The library contains many books that explains the game's mechanics. For example, this book is about items. We really don't need to read it because I can talk about that in due time. Sorry, I just had to swallow for a second there. Maps and Memories Guidebook. No, I don't think we need to read this one either. There's one book in particular we want to read. The Properties of Warp Points. Nah, we don't really need to learn about that. Fun with Bombs. Well, since we don't have bombs, we don't really need to read that book in the first place. Secrets of the Whirling Blade. We'll get more into that once we find our sword. How to Handle Your Shield Like a Pro. This one we actually do want to read. If you're new to the game, that is. If you hold the R button, you can defend yourself from enemy attacks, and you can push enemies, too. Besides the standard shield, there is also a mirrored variety that can reflect beams. Hmm, could that be a little foresight into what will eventually happen on our journey? I don't know. Let's read this one. Atlas of Koholint Island. Okay, this one I do want to read. You can look up the name of a place. So let's take a look at the map. Here we can see an entire map of the island. And this can prove quite handy in case you get lost. So, if you're unsure of what to do next, you might want to consider coming back to the library and looking at the map to find out where you should go. Not only that, but if we press the minus button, we get our own map. However, we can only take a look at areas we've already explored. And, new to the Switch remake, you can press the right analog stick to zoom in. Not only that, but you can also press the A button to place a pin on an important destination you don't want to forget. So say I wanted to go shop for something, and I wanted to remember to go back to the shop, I could place a pin right here to indicate as such. And by pressing the Y button, you can hide all of the markers. By pressing the X button, you can take a look at your memories to see what collectibles you've obtained, as well as the pieces of advice, advice you get from the owl. We'll meet him momentarily. Yes, there is a talking owl in the game. Stranger things have happened. There's also one other book that we want to take a look at. Dark Secrets and Mysteries of Koholint. And when we try to read it... <gasps> What's this? You can't read the tiny print without the aid of a magnifying lens. But where would you get one of those? Where indeed? Maybe if you lend some people a hand, they'll lend you a lens. I believe Link's Awakening was the very first Zelda game to introduce the trading sequence, where you trade a bunch of items with people, and it would lead to some... And we... Blah, 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 blah. I can't speak properly. And it would lead to something good. I'm getting tongue-tied already. But this video is off to a terrific start. So let's check and see what the sign says. Right, Tail Cave, down Toronto Shores. Well, shores mean the beach, so let's head down. And we will head down to meet a new enemy. This, our first enemy, to be specific, this is an Octorok. Octoroks spit rocks at you. Oh boy, I'm so hungry, I could eat an Octorok. I'm sorry, I had to do that. I couldn't resist it. Not only that, but we're also going to meet another new enemy. This is an urchin. And is it me, or do these guys look like Gordos from the Kirby series? They have the same eyes, they have the same spines, heck, they even have the same color. They might as well be Gordos. But unlike in Kirby, they aren't invincible. Let's go and read this sign. Beware of sea urchins. Don't touch them with your bare hands. Touch them, we cannot. But push them, we can. Not with our hands, but if we remember what the library book said, we can use our shield to push these guys out of the way. Oh, hello, you are also a new enemy. A lever. Levers pop out of the sand and spin around to attack you. They're pretty weak. 
and they can be easily avoided. But they are pretty annoying because they constantly pop out of the sand. Oh! Oh, 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 oh! I spy with my little eyes something metal that's really shiny. Yep, it's our sword. But wait, there is flapping in the distance. So you are the lad who owns the sword. Now I understand why the monsters are starting to act so violently. A courageous lad has come to wake the wind fish. It is said that you cannot leave the island unless you wake the wind fish. You should now go north to the mysterious forest. I will wait for you there. A mysterious forest sounds mysterious, but that can wait. For now, check it out! You found your sword! It must be yours because it has your name engraved on it. You can swing it with the B button to attack any enemies in your pack. <laughs> Oh yeah, now the real adventure begins, and take a listen to that classic Zelda overworld theme. Ah, the good ones never die. Anywho, with sword in hand, we can now kill stuff. We can kill the evil beast. Ow! Jerk! Spitting rocks at Link is punishable by death. This also gives me a good opportunity to talk about rupees. Sometimes enemies will drop rupees, which are the main currency of the Zelda series, as most of you probably already knew. Green rupees are worth one, blue rupees are worth five, red are worth 20, and purple are worth 50. The fact that the rupees are color-coded it comes in real handy because all of the rupees were blue in the classic game due to graphics limitations. There's something else we can do as well. We can go down here and cut the bushes to reveal hearts. Usually there will be three hearts in these three bushes every time you enter Mabe Village. So it's a good source of health. If we hop down here, we can see Link shriek, or yell, or whatever he does, but right here. You got a piece of heart. Press the plus button to open the subscreen and see. If you've played a Zelda game before, then you should know what a piece of heart does. Four piece of hearts create a new heart container, which give you additional life. You can also check out your items on this screen, and if you press the L button, you can see the map, and since we explored Toronto Shores, that area is now available to us. Uh, I don't really need this pin anymore. Now I want to quickly look over something else. This is the system screen. This shows you the control scheme, and it provides the option of saving your game. Let me tell you, this save feature is a lot easier to use than the original one was because in order to save the game, you had to press the A, B, Start, and Select buttons on the Game Boy in order to save, and that was the only way you could do it. Furthermore, you only had the option of saving and quitting. And you can snap Bow Wow all you want, but it really won't make a difference. Why would you anyway? He's there to help you. Over here, in this interesting looking tree with the telephone on it, is, well, a telephone booth. And inside, well, there's a telephone. I should stop being so obvious. Now, if you're ever stuck on what to do and you don't know where to go next, you can walk inside one of these booths and pick up the phone. At the other end is a dude named Urira, and he will tell you where you need to go if you ever get lost. There is a library in the village that might have some good information for you. I just talked about that, dude. Yeah, 
Not exactly the most helpful guy. Well, we don't really need to go to the library because the owl told us to go to the mysterious forest. And the mysterious forest is right up here. So let's go ahead and cut down this bush and listen to our good friend the owl yet again. Oh, brave lad, on your quest to wake the dreamer, welcome to the mysterious forest. Much of mystery you will find on this uncharted Koholint Island. I'm afraid you may find it a trifle difficult to leave the island while the windfish naps. By the by, have you ever visited the tail cave which is south of the village? Go there with the key you find in this forest. The windfish is watching. Objective is clear. We must find a key in the forest, and we will do that in the next video. See you guys next time. <laughs>